going on guys welcome back to the channel fresh off of covid i'm glad i didn't die uh hopefully you're glad i didn't die either i definitely would have taken a bullet a couple times it was absolutely terrible but you know you know what made having covid so bad i bought the new m90 like the day before i started having symptoms brand new and basically got to take it out of the box and then i had to sit there and look at it for like two or three weeks because i had covid for quite some time uh and that was really tough I'm eagerly making it. It's the first video I've been able to actually make since COVID. So anyway, first things first, guys, if you like supporting the channel, we don't do Patreon. We never will. I don't want free money or anything like that. But if you do want to support us and you like to look pretty fly, then go by thirdpinthreads.com and check out our cool outline t-shirts. I know this is mainly an AK channel. I've got our commando t-shirt on, but I love carry handle ARs and I'm really proud of this shirt. We have some RPK shirts on there, some Draco shirts, our 545 Crink shirts, finally. And those are almost gone, uh, but we still have some of these commandos and we do have some Draco shirts. So guys, if you do want to help us out, go check it out. And if the hats haven't dropped yet, because they should be dropping like any day now, if they haven't dropped yet, then they will drop very soon. Uh, that's going to be a September drop, so look out for those too. So the M90, okay, I remember right where I was when I saw it. We all saw the TFB TV video with Shorty Short James, you know, guy that shops at the Baby Gap, but makes a good gun video every now and again. Uh, got us all antsy and our pantsy about this new 5.56 AK, finally. As a Stava 5.56 AK, we haven't seen those since uh, some of the pistols coming in, but mainly it's the rifle. We haven't had a rifle in that caliber since the M90 NP which there's been one on this channel for a couple years now. Uh, I'll try to show you some footage now. I had a blast with my M90 for a couple of years, man. I shot thousands of rounds through it. It was almost 100% flawless, got a lot of good content out of it, a lot of fun, and had fun accessorizing it while I did. But when this new M90 came out, I had to have it. I was like, that's fine, that's the one we all wanted. It takes AK Max, that's the one. So unfortunately, you know, we had to sell the M90 MP, but what's crazy is I sold it for more money than I paid for a brand new M90. Sold it for like 1400 bucks. Ended up getting the new M90 after taxes just below 1400 bucks. So it was like an even swap. But I guess the question is, you know, did I do good? Because the old M90 that took AR mags that everybody, that no one seemed to like, I loved it. Um, you know, didn't sell very well when it was here, got slept on and they stopped importing it, but it ran great for me. Did I do good trading that for the new one? Um, I don't know. But there seems to be a ton of interest around the new M90. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of dynamic content on it. Uh, there's a ton of unboxings. Uh, there's very few shooting footage of them. There's some really great mag compatibility videos uh, from Austin's Armory. You should check him out. Uh, that's great info. But. Uh, not as much content as I would like for there to be on this gun. So hopefully we're gonna fill that void. Now, because there are so many videos of people unboxing these things and you get to see exactly how it is brand new, I'm not gonna make that video. I've already pimped mine out. So I'm gonna show you some aftermarket touches that I've done and then I just wanna go to the range and see how this thing does. I knew the second I bought it, all that black furniture was going away. It had a, you know, Hogue handguard, gross. Magpul, pistol grip, gross, and probably the grossest, but it makes people mad, that Zukov stock. Guys, I'm not a fan, I just don't like it. Don't like it, never have. Ugh. I knew there was a really cool gun that I would like underneath all that gross black furniture. It just needed a little bit of wood and some other stuff for me to like it, and it has that now. There's still a couple things I'm waiting on, like a trigger, I'm still waiting on a trigger to come in, we're gonna swap that out. By the time we actually shoot this, hopefully I'll have the ALG in there. But uh, right now it's still stuck. All right, let me show you what it did to it. And here we go. Pretty sharp. It's gone so damn long, it's kind of hard to get it all on camera. We'll start from the front. So right away, obviously, all that gross black furniture is gone. We do have a new grip, but, you know, it's better than Magpul, I think. Uh, these things do have 14 by one left-hand threads like any other AK. You know, I thought long barrel, 223, this thing just is begging for a flash hider. So, uh, oh, no tuning fork action. So we put a J-Mac uh, 
flash hider on there. This is actually modeled after a German G36 flash hider. And it's compensated so the bottom's closed a little bit, but it just looks good. I think it looks really good on there. And yes, long barrel on these, long Johnny, long Johnny barrels. Uh, the barrel is a little bit thicker, the chrome line, they're 18 inches. Uh, it's gonna go really well with this round. Of course, I'm already used to that with the old M90. I know how they shoot, so there's gonna be no surprises there. Of course, there's that beautiful gas block. Three settings. One for my pleasure, one for her pleasure, and one for your pleasure. So, we're gonna suppress it. We're not really gonna pay attention to that break-in uh, period that Zestava's talking about. I mean, do you have 200 rounds to blast through this thing to break it in? I don't think so, I sure don't. My favorite part, the handguard. So this is my most prized set of uh, uh, trench chart handguards. They happen to be Hugo pattern, three slots. Uh, they have Kula carved up top. I've been told by many Serbians that that is a town. I don't know if the town still exists over there, but that's what that was. A little bit of stain here, don't know what that was and some more trench art on the other side. Nice and oily, looks really good on this gun. It's just a good contrast. Uh, the safety is really, really tight. I'm just gonna bend it. Ooh, when I get a chance. Ow. I'm just gonna bend it when I get a chance and uh, we'll get that sucker loosened up. These safeties I think are really nice. So I'm not gonna change it. They just are so tight, but they're, they're easy to loosen up. It's just a leaf spring, just bend it. The trigger is standard and I do have an ALG on the way for it. Maybe by the time we're actually gonna shoot this thing, I'll have it in there so you'll get to see that. But I will say, trigger on these out of the box is really, really nice. So don't feel like you need to change it. I'm just a bit of a trigger snob, so it's gonna get an ALG. It's like sriracha sauce, man. Put that shit on everything. We got rid of the gross mag pull grip and we put my favorite AK grip in the world, US Palm, with a little bit of goon tape. And it's one of the OGs that has the butt plug. So, uh, you can put some snacks in there if you choose. And you know, it looks kind of cool on there. Okay, got rid of the uke, that friggin' Zukov stock. And we have a JMAC SS8 SIG style stock. And you've seen these in other videos. This is just a piece of pick mount right there that smacks into the back of a Yugo receiver. As you know, the Yugo as a Stava receivers, it's just like an open cavity with a threaded hole. It's extremely easy to change out stocks on these. This is just a puck that you smack in there and bolt it in and then put your SIG stock on. I do love the way the JMAC SS8 looks on these things. Super traditional, bam, modern. I love that half and half look. I love tradish mixed with modern on an AK. Just, it's just something about it, man, it's great. Of course, these guns are set up with rails so if you were lucky enough to score one of these RS Regulate rails, a bunch of them just flooded the market, so hopefully you guys got one if you needed one. Uh, this is the 307MS, and uh, this is this optic gets put on like every gun I have. It's, it's a bit of a hua, but we have the Trijicon MRO on top of this bad boy. Awesome sight picture. Looks good, feels good. It's got a nice balance to it. Definitely not a light gun. It's pretty friggin' heavy, actually. But I'm excited to shoot it. So that's what we've done. You can do this to your M90. You can even take it a lot farther than this. You know, they have really modern handguards. You could go like SLR Rifle Works, TDI. Uh, I've actually got a cheese grater on the way from my buddy Tony at Kyber. I'd, I'd like to put a cheese grater on this, but it's not here yet. Anyway, that is how I've pimped out my M90. So I think it's been tastefully upgraded. I don't have many mags that I think are gonna work for it, so I'm gonna bring what I what I hope will work for it. And we're gonna go to the range and shoot this thing. And of course, we're gonna put a Wolverine on the end of this bad Johnny and shoot it suppressed and try out those different gas settings and see what it feels like. Let's go to my home away from home and shoot this bad boy. So, remember I said I was gonna put an ALG in it before we start shooting? I put an ALG in it. I will tell you out of all the ALGs I've ever installed, this has the shortest take up and reset I've ever felt. It is the ALG uh, Elite or Enhanced, whatever the, the better one is out of the two. I think this thing is going to be an extremely fast ripper. But uh, 
Remember we said earlier, we're not really gonna worry about a break-in period. I'm just gonna leave it on setting two and really just function checking. So I thought it was only right if the first mag we put through the gun is with the original mag that comes with it. But I did bring several mags that do lock into this thing that if they run, I'm so excited. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and blast our first 30. On setting two, into a big dirt pile. Very exciting. Get our little red dot turned on. All right. Chambered okay. Oh, by the way, we also did loosen up the safety. I remember on camera earlier I said it was really tight, so that's what we've done. Installed the ALG trigger. There was already a trigger pin retaining plate, and we loosened up that safety. So, money man. Smoky first shot. Man, shoots just like I remember it. Hardly any recoil to speak of. And you know if we put a muzzle brake on this thing, there would be even less. Here we go. Ooh, I think we overran the trigger. I think that's what happened there. There is a little bit of a dimple there. Let's see if you guys can catch that. I don't know if that's a light primer strike or if that's just from chambering. Um, hopefully this hammer face isn't going to give us light primer strikes. So what we're going to do is, we are empty. I'll put that back in the mag. I will notice right here, right away on this, this brand new mag, this mag that comes with it. Let's see if you can see that. Do you see the plastic already moving on the feed lips? That might kind of be what happened there because that, that bolt felt like it was dragging a little bit. So this mag is definitely self-clearancing. Right there, you can tell. They do say it needs a break-in period, so giving it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, put that same round right on top. Woo. Definitely overrunning the trigger. I think that's what's happening. Maybe the trigger just can't keep up. Here's what we'll do. Let's put it on gas setting three, add some gas just in case I'm pulling the trigger too fast and the bolt can't quite keep up. Because as you know, that's how that works. Let's finish this mag out. With all the gas. Definitely more recoil. Those casings are flying like 20, 30 feet away. Bolt hold open. Uh, definitely with all the gas, there's no overrunning that trigger. She is smoking. So, you know, maybe there's a little bit of merit to what they say about trying to break it in on three, but next I want to uh, test the mag that if it works, I'm going to be absolutely blown away and it's going to be a very big perk of this gun. This is a Galil mag. This is an original steel rock and lock Galil mag. This is not the steel Zestava rock and lock mag. They do look a little similar. The Galil mag is longer, and what's so cool about Galil mags, they hold 35 rounds standard capacity. Uh, the Zestava 223 steel mags that everyone's saying to buy for these, and I have had some in the past, I think typically they're between like 20 and 30 bucks, maybe more. So what I'm super excited about is these things right here, they are so cheap, so available, and they hold 35 rounds, and they're very well-made mags. This mag locks into this gun better than almost every other 223 variant of an AK mag that I have. Question is, does it feed? Now at the house, I was cycling this thing manually and it was taking rounds out of the mag. Under normal shooting operations, if this thing will run Galil mags reliably, that is the biggest bonus of this gun that I can think of so far. That's a good sign. This is so exciting that this mag's working. Ooh, we had a jam. Yeah. Nose dive. Man, I don't know. It worked so good for so long. Oh, man. That's such a bummer. Yeah. It's like there's not enough spring retention towards the end of the mag. 
to give it what it needs and it nose dives the round. Bummer. Polish Barrel Mag. Another mag that is uh, extremely common in this country, very cheap. They're just solid plastic. There's no metal in them whatsoever other than the base plate. So try to keep a an eye on that mag latch and you'll see what I mean. It's almost like it doesn't move, but it is 100% locked in. No mag wobble. Problem with that is, is coming out takes a lot of force to get it out. And it doesn't, it gives you like a false sense that it's locked in. Or it gives you a false sense that it's not locked in because you don't hear the click, but it, it clicks in. This one hand fed at the house. If this mag works, that's, you know, that's a bonus. I would rather the Galil mag work though. First round chamber, just fine. Here we go. Absolutely flawless with the Polish mags. And you know what? I mean, they'll work in over time. But the good news is they are super cheap and super available. And for a plastic mag, super well made. And they do look pretty baller in there because they're translucent. That's good. Big bummer on the Galil mags, but we still have one brand new with a really nice brand new spring. We'll try that. That's just a common thing with the Galil mags. A lot of the really old surplus ones are pretty used up. But there's a lot of new ones that are flawless. All right, let's do some dynamic shooting behind a VTAC barricade on the clock. Doesn't matter, we're not really timing anything. This is a uh, modified, heavily modified. You got to do a bunch of grinding on the back. Doesn't matter. Circle 10 mag that just locks in. Pretty confident it will work. It worked in an M85 anyway. And here's our new Galil mag. Hopefully that will work as well. I mean a fresh Galil mag was flawless with 35 rounds that's a big bonus Galil mags are hit or miss the newer you can find them the better time you're gonna have Woo. Woo. oh man that got my heart pumping this thing's a shooter dude and that's all been on setting three stand by Time is 24.48, oh. 25 seconds. <laughs> How's that Zestava run, dude? Oh, dude. With the right mag, it, it runs great. Let's just get right into it. I'm literally, I'm, I'm fresh back. I wanted to close this video out while the shooting impression is fresh on my mind. Uh, as you saw, we put the very first rounds through it. And uh, right off the bat, I, uh, I definitely think that you're probably going to need to do their break-in period and shoot this thing for a while on setting three. Um, it just seemed to be a little, it couldn't keep up with the fast trigger pulls on setting two. So we went full gas. So, you know, break it in however you choose to, but even though you're going to have to deal with a little more recoil for a while, hell, you might have to just go ahead and turn and burn on setting three, four for some time. That ALG trigger in this thing though, holy crap. <laughs> so good, dude. You can really, you really get cooking on this thing and it's only gonna get better when it starts to break in and we can start tuning the gas down a little bit. 
But we shot all day with a flash hider and this thing still shoots like a pussycat uh, as much as it can on gas setting three anyway. Um, but I just know from experience from all the other M90 MPs that I've shot that once they do get broken in, you can pretty much shoot on any gas setting you want and it will function flawlessly. One thing I need to say right now, I apologize guys. I know I've said in the video a couple times we were gonna shoot it suppressed. I just got so caught up at the range. We had so much stuff out there we were doing. Completely forgot to put a suppressor on it and test it, but you should know this gun is obviously going to be a uh, you know a champion on the channel for a while. We are just scratching the surface on this gun. It's going to be uh, constantly updating on the channel. This is something I know we're all super interested in. We're all going to grow and watch to see how it does. The biggest thing today, though, that we, I really want to talk about are the mags. What worked, what didn't. 100% function out of the Zestava provided mag. One thing I'm super weird and conflicted on are the Galil mags. But what's so funny is I brought three Galil mags out today, two of which were the two newest ones that I have, as far as like bought them in the plastic wrapper. And I have uh, the Cerakoted one that I honestly, because it's been coated, I don't know if it's really old, really new, don't know. That one did not seem to work like, it was like 50%. One of my brand new Galil mags, as you saw in the video, was 100% flawless from the first round to the 35th round, and I got super excited. I'm like, yes, holy crap, Galil mags work. I then put my other brand new Galil mag in, and it just, from the first shot, would not work. We have a little bit of that footage too. So, I don't know, man. Like, I know Galil mags can be finicky, but one's totally flawless, the other two, one's like 50%, and then the other one, nothing. I, I think maybe you might be able to find a couple Galil mags that will work with your M90, but it just sucks that they don't all work. That would have been a huge win. The Polish mags, although they are extremely tight to get in and out, because they're plastic, I feel like they will work in over time. 100% flawless action out of the translucent Polish mags, which is great because they're cheap, they're robust, they work, and they're available. So it's nice knowing that's an option. They just might fit really tight in your gun. And I have one modified Circle 10 mag that you saw, uh, did a little running gun with it. Uh, you know, that, it was modified to fit with a, uh, an M85. In fact, I think I had the footage of me shooting that. And because it was modified to fit that gun, there was a lot of plastic that you have to remove on the back around the locking tab. It's not worth doing all that trial and error on such an expensive mag. So I still think Circle 10 mags are out unless you want to file on one. If you can get it to lock up, Circle 10 mags will flawlessly work in these things if you're willing to modify them. We did a little run and gun with it. This thing shot great for such a long, heavy gun. I enjoyed the flash hider. Uh, I enjoyed the RS Regulate mount. Perfect sight picture, awesome. Loosened up the safety, it worked great. We were actually running that stage back to back all day and like 24, 25 was like the fastest we could squeeze out of it. And this thing had what it takes to, uh, to go that fast. So I'm confident this thing will do well to match. Uh, on setting three today, it was 100% flawless. If we had any issues at all, it was just trying out different mags. So right now, I'm gonna give this thing, not two full thumbs up right now, but like one big thumbs up and this one's ready. This one's ready to jump up there with it. Like I said, we just scratched the surface of this gun. We barely got into tune on the gas system. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and you know keep breaking this thing in. We're going to shoot it suppressed. We're going to shoot it at a match. Change up some furniture here and there. And it's, you know, more videos are coming. I know everyone is eager to find out more about these things and just how they shoot, but for me, it was a blast to shoot today, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it, man. Pretty happy with it. More updates to come on this thing. Remember, if you want to support us, go on a Third Pin Threads. Check out the shirts, man. We still got some 545 cranks. We don't do Patreon. I want you to get something for your cash. Go by there. Check that out. Um, get some hats coming, too. As I mentioned earlier, thanks for stopping by. Leave us a like. Leave us a comment. Subscribe or not. Doesn't matter. I'm just happy that you stopped by. And uh, we will absolutely see you next week when we take you on a full tour of the Primary Arms Range Day with a couple of really good friends. See you then. Bye.